Don't worry, Daphne. You'll be just fine. Excuse me. What's, what's going on here? Oh, hello, Mr. Wilson. I'm Dr. Weinstein. I'm Daphne McGuckin's doctor. She's wasting away from scurvy. Her father was a pirate. But gee whiz, are you sure a cold studio is the best place for her to be? Well, I tell you something, you know, she's your biggest fan, and maybe if you make her laugh, she'll be better and be completely cured. Well, uh, Daphne? Daphne, can you hear me, honey? Yeah. Uh, okay, on tonight's show, I'm going to tell the funniest joke that ever was. Yahoo! <laughs> Mr. Wilson, if you boot this one, chances are she'll croak. Midnight. I'm so darn happy you're here. I'm just had the hair standing up on the back of my neck. And speaking of hair standing up, Scooter Peach in the band. It's, huh? my, it's my hair. <laughs> Too much in it, Dick. What uh, was it? Yeah, you get a little low on the moose there on this one, aren't you? Yeah. Scooter, this is a very. I'm. I'm a little, little tearful here for just a moment. I, those of you, you know, you saw the opening of the show. I hope. Uh, a uh, little Daphne McGuckin is uh, outside the studio at this moment. Daphne is, of course, uh, the brave little girl who has scurvy. Um, Riddled with scurvy? Yeah, she has scurvy. And she's with us on the show tonight. And um, if I can tell the funniest joke that ever was, she can get better. And uh, then she can also fulfill her lifelong dream, which is to teach sign language to the rhesus monkeys. Those are the... <laughs> You know, those ones that look pissed off all the time? You know, those yeah. monkeys? Yeah. You can do it. So, um, little Daphne, I know you're watching the show from, from somewhere here in the studio, so this one, Han, this one is for you. Yeah. You see, this frog went into a bank because he wanted to get a car loan. And the bank manager, he said to him, we don't loan money to frogs. <laughs> we don't... <clears throat> all right, uh, little Daphne... Hang with us, babe. I'll, I'll try to... Do I have time to try another one now? No? All right, I'll try another one in a minute. All right, little Daphne, just hang on, hon. Hang on. Um, I'll tell you what, the next thing that we would like to do here, uh, if, if we may, and that is our things that sound dirty but really aren't. Now, I get so tired of saying that word, that phrase all the time, that I would like to, because we have little Daphne McGuckin here, whose body is riddled with scurvy, I would like to, uh, to uh, give her a little treat and let her participate with us on this. So, uh, if you're, uh, hon, are you ready out there? You got it, Dick. Good. All right. <laughs> well, let me get a couple of these up out of the way here, because our very first... Things that sound dirty but aren't... Thank you. Comes to us from Scott Bloom of San Francisco, California. Scott is a water heater a repairman in the Bay Area and admits that he's never run into a gas cock that he could not repair. <laughs> Our very second now. Things that sound... <laughs> you okay, hon? All right, our very second one comes here tonight from, uh, who is this from? Ray Florence of Vandalia, Ohio. Now, Ray makes his living in southern Ohio, working as a handyman. While he admits there are some things that he could still learn about plumbing, nobody questions his ability when it comes to hot slots. And that's what, <laughs> hold it now, wait a minute, this thing wasn't plugged in. Are you guys playing a joke on me here? Look at this thing out. Oh, Jesus, that... <laughs> I didn't know the whole thing was hooked up to this. All right, get it back in there. All right, our third tonight, and our very third, and our last... Things that sound dirty, but... All right. It also comes from Ohio. Ken Bidner is up in Ohio. Ken, for 22 years, has been working for National Cash Register Company, NCR, and Ken never leaves his house unless he has his electronic stud finder. <laughs> And there they are, huh? Uh, I, do we have... 
I can't believe that a guy that's worked for NCR for 22 years has any reason for an electronic stud finder. Uh, do we have, we've got his number around here. Is it loaded? Did you load the number up? Let me direct dial. I think, let's call Ken right now in Dayton, Ohio, and find out exactly what the story is behind this, why a guy would need something just like this. I don't know how many of you have been to Dayton, Ohio. Hello? Yes, is this Ken Bidner? Yes, it is. Ken Dick Wilson at Camp Midnight. How are you? Great, Dick. How are you? Well, good. You're watching Camp Midnight up there in, uh, in Dayton. Yes, I do. What's the big deal in Dayton? If we were to come up there and bring all these people with us tonight, what would we want to do up there in that town? Well, we have the, the Air Force Museum. That's the big thing here. Oh, Ken, I'm sorry. I think our bus just got a flat tire. <laughs> yeah. Ken, I wanted to ask you, you know, you sent in a thing that sound dirty but really aren't. Why in the world, Ken, after 22 years at NCR, do you need an electronic stud finder? Well, Dick, listen, this whole thing started very innocently. I was peeking through a catalog, and I came across an advertisement for an electric stud finder. And, of course, I was shocked and outraged by this ad, as I'm sure you would have been, Dick. And uh, I felt that this was something I should call to your attention so you could set the record straight as a public service. Let me ask you one thing, Ken. How, qu how far apart do you find the studs in, uh, in Dayton there? Uh, they're uh, 16 inches uh, apart. All right, maybe, the, maybe we'll get on that bus after all and head up that way, okay? Yeah. Hey, Ken, thanks a lot. All right, for thanks talking for calling, to Dick. Boy, live from Dayton, Ohio, and thank you. <laughs> thank you, Ken. I'll tell you what, if you have things that sound dirty but really aren't, I'll take it for you, little Daffy. Send them to us here at Camp Midnight, Post Office Box 189, Hollywood, California, 978, or fax them to us if you'd like. Yes, we have one of those, too. 818-843-FAXS. And uh, Daphne, well, don't worry, I'm going to tell you a good one in a minute. We'll be back in a minute on Camp Midnight. Uh, oh, i tell you what. Hang on, hang on, Scooter. i got time to do one more thing, don't I? Are you guys... Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, you guys hungry? Never, yeah, never mind me, Dick. All right, Go ahead. before I get you some food, you've got to listen to this. What I want you to do is be sure you send in your Camp Midnight Run cards. We've got the sweepstakes going on. It's the same address I just gave you, because we're going to give away a trip to anywhere in the United States, hotel and airfare, and we'll be announcing our winner on March 31st, so get them in here real quick, all right? What do you say? I'm going to call over to Fung Lums over at Universal City and have some nice things sent over. Uh, what do we got here? What do you want? Well, you want to have butterfly prawns? Sound pretty good? All right, beef side. Beef side takes spring rolls. Spring rolls coming. Steamed shumai, uh, shumai for 50. And we'll also get some fried, I, I, I'm going I'm to get some fried barbecued pork buns for little Daphne because when she eats, it makes her forget about scurvy. We'll be back in just a minute. I'll call them while the commercials are on. Okay. <laughs> I have some. All right, we'll feed everybody, if you don't mind. My first guest grew up on one of TV's favorite families, and now she's all grown up and starting a bunch of her own. A warm Camp Midnight welcome to the lovely Maureen McCormick. Ooh, and she has brought I, I brought you a present. Um, this is until the Chinese food gets here. Okay. <laughs> Can I open it now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Oh, do we have a little plug sign that flashes at the bottom of the screen there? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever had those, the thin mint cookies? These, I, I've heard of these. I've never gotten these, oh. but they're, they're delicious, aren't they're they? so good. Yeah. Selling these things. We'll open up. We'll put them out with the food a little bit later. Great. How you doing? Congratulations. You're going to have a baby. No, I'm not. Well, that's a, what a remarkable makeup job. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, someone today asked me that, and I said, no, I've been dying to do that. And they were so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I'm about eight weeks away. Are you? Yeah. Now, you had the, what do they call it, where they go in and they look into there, the... The amnio, the sonogram. Yeah, the sonogram. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you can, what? What did you see? You know the sex and everything yeah. of the baby? Yeah. What is it? What do you think it is? Boy. Boy. Girl. 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 Boy. I'll say a girl. It's a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. What? what uh, uh, do you have you and your husband? And uh, your husband is who now again? Michael Cummings. He's here in the audience. Michael, congratulations. There's Michael. All right, rewinder. Get a job. How many, uh, you've got some names. 
thought of for we this? We do have some names. We have about five names picked out. And have you decided on it yet? Or which one exactly? No, we're going to wait till we see her. Let's decide tonight with our Camp Midnight audience. <laughs> I, you have to ask my husband because, you see, uh -huh. he, he... You, you want to keep this fair and square, huh? He wants to keep it a secret. Cordelia. Your dad wanted Cordelia. Oh, Cordelia. <laughs> Right. So you, you'd rather we not vote then, right? Huh? Oh, come on. Let's hear. Let's hear the five names. It's, it's up on. to him. Let's hear him anyway. It's up to him. Mm, let, let, I, I want to go home still alive. Marcia. Well, I think. Wait, hold on. I, I think we're going to get into some sort of little spat I, I here from our love couple. That. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll we'll watch the papers for the name then. All right. You know, there were so many great Brady Bunch episodes. Uh, a couple of them, my favorite. Uh, what about the one where you're you had to wear the braces or something? Oh, what happened with yes. this? Do you all remember that show? <laughs> um, well, I actually had to get braces for that show. I went to an orthodontist and they cemented them on. I had to get impressions and everything. And I had to leave them on for a week. And I remember coming to the set and Chris Knight and Mike Lickenland looked at me and said, oh, you really had to get them? And I said, yeah. And they said, oh, you know, you're going to have marks on your teeth for the rest of your life. <laughs> and I was walking around for a few hours, really believing them, going crazy. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, does anybody in the audience, you have some favorite uh, Brady Bunch episodes? Just raise your hand. Let me just take a microphone out here. Okay. And uh, let's see, where was that hand again? All right. Excuse me if I put something in your face here. Um, <laughs> Who are you? I'm Joanne. Joanne, how are you? There, there's Marsha over there, Marsha Brady, you know? Yeah. What, what, what was your favorite one? Hawaii. The one when you went to Hawaii. Oh. Were you really in Hawaii? <laughs> we were really in Hawaii, yeah, and I was really in love with Barry Williams during that show. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait a minute. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I really was, and Eve was really in love with Chris. And Susie and, and Michael, even though they were, they were very young, were really in love, too. It was so funny. We were all walking on the beach, and the producer was giving us lessons on what to do. And <laughs> well, this whole thing, uh, was, oh, what, backstage was a, a den of lust, then, on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> it really was, for five years. <laughs> Anybody else have a, uh, an episode, a quick episode? All right, good. Uh, uh, what about the very Brady Christmas? It's, uh, that was a successful a very, very reunion. Yeah, show. it was so much fun to do. It was great getting back together with everyone. How, how long had it been since you'd seen some of the people? Um, actually, not that long. Um, they had been to my wedding, and I, we really we keep in touch. Mm -hmm. We're all real close, and it was so successful that they're now talking about a new series, a spinoff, or more movies of the week, which. I think they want to do very soon after Cordelia is born. <laughs> Any special kind of a birth method you're going to do or anything? I just want them to knock me out and wake me up when it's over. Okay. I had a dream. I had a dream and they brought me to her in a little white bonnet when it was all over and it was wonderful. That's the way I'd like it. Ooh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that costs. It's, white bonnets are real expensive <laughs> on, on the hospital anymore. Uh, w one other quick thing that I wanted to mention about the old Den of Lust. Um, <laughs> you were running around there on the set, and there were a lot of other shows being shot at that time. Yes. So, uh, what other kind of people were hanging around, and were you kind well, of Well, um, you know, I, I mean, I was going through all my, you know, growing up years on that show, and it was very hard to date people since I was, you know, at the studio all the time. So, anyway, Mod Squad was filming there, Mission Impossible, Star Trek, Mannix, and my possibilities really were very limited. Um, a lot of those people were, were older on those shows, but Michael Cole I was really hot for, but he didn't go for me. Oh. I don't know. I, I tried for a long time. Um, pardon me? On the Mod Squad. Where on is he now? Yeah. You do, he, he's he's See, too young. These people he's were too born young. After the Mod oh Squad. Oh my gosh, off. I feel so old. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I really I didn't have much of a choice. So it was really, you know, I was limited to the Brady's. Well, you found you a good man. You found you a good man right here. So, I did, uh, yeah. I did. Uh, what else? What else are you producing and writing and doing something? Um, I've just um, optioned the rights to uh, a project that my husband and I are working on. Actually, uh, Interscope uh, Productions has optioned the rights. They did uh, the movie Three Men and a Baby. Mm -hmm. So we're working with them and, and hope to get that made into a movie of the week or a movie. All right. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Well, I, I wish... Scooter, we missed the boat here. We should have bought a little baby gift. 
for Maureen. Our mistake, huh? Yeah. Do we have anything we could give for the baby? Uh, uh, an extra about, styrofoam cup. How about an electronic <laughs> stud finder? Okay. All right. Take this if you want. Uh, oh, also, thank you so I'd like much. for you to, if you would. Wow. You see, back behind you, our wall of cups here, huh? yes. our wall of fame. Please yes. sign and put your dental impression on this cup so My we'll know you in the future. Just kind of bite down on it and okay, sign it. Okay. There she is, Maureen McCormick on Camp Midnight. Yeah. Coming this month to USA Network, a Camp Midnight Showcase Theater Movie Presentation. The classic movie musical of yesteryear meets this year's box office smash. Camp Rock Side today, Camp Rock Side thing, definitely, oh, cold, definitely very wet, definitely very wet. It's just too wet outside, Nick. Dustin Hoffman. Of course, of course, I'm an excellent dancer. Of course, I, I Charlie, Charlie Babbitt told me, Charlie, Charlie Babbitt told me to dance. It's, uh, Sunday nights or Tuesday nights, actually, dance nights. I'm an excellent, excellent dancer. Singing in the Rain Man. Coming this month to the Camp Midnight Showcase Theater. Thursdays following Cartoon Express. to the future, though I felt in some scenes maybe you were a little over the top. Oh, well, well, thanks very much, little girl. <laughs> Somebody move her out of here. I'm trying to get to the coffee. Hey, get me Don't, in. Don't worry, ah! little Daffy. We'll take care of you. You know, folks, my next guest is, is so wicked that uh, his new comedy album carries a Beware This Stuff Is Offensive sticker on it. He opened 1989 with an HBO special called The Dice Man Cometh, so look out, here cometh Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> I dig the ashtray, man. Look at this thing. It's like I'm going to go through three packs. But I love to smoke. If you smoke, light up. Give it that party atmosphere, you know what I'm saying? I've been smoking 15 years, my lung feels great. Uh, yeah, I started smoking at the Schick Center, you know what I'm saying? I went there to stop drinking. <laughs> yeah. But I love it, you know? I, it don't bother me like people. I jog five miles a day and smoke. I, I smoke when I'm making love to a chick, you know? Sometimes they get a little annoyed, you know, the ashtray slips off their belly now and then, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and I know what you're saying. Cute comic, but he's got an attitude. <laughs> I can't help it. It's where I come from, jail. <laughs> yeah, I've always had an attitude. The second I was born, the doctor smacked me in the behind. I looked at him. I said, Doc, uh, you got a problem? <laughs> and then you know what they do the second you're born? They throw you in a nursery with like 30, 40 kids you've never seen before in your life, right? So I'm laying there bored out of my mind. I asked this one kid, I go, hey, Johnny, you got a light for me, right? Kid's laying there, taking a dump in his diapers, drooling all over himself. Some saying this kid got no friggin' class, you know? I put on my leather ring for a little service. This big blonde nurse comes running in and shoves a plastic nipple in my mouth. I look at her, I say, sweetheart, uh, who are you teasing, right? Pick up the dress, we're gonna mow the lawn tonight, honey. But it's unbelievable, I'll tell you. Because as you get older, that's when you learn people really have no common sense, you know? It's like I'm in the bank the other day. Guy taps me on the shoulder. He's like, excuse me, is this the end of the line? And I'm like, no, moron. It's the front. We're all standing backwards. It's a brand new thing in banking. Haven't you heard about it? It's like when you call up the telephone, you know, operator, and you go, yeah, I want to make a collect call. They go, person to person, no Bigfoot to E.T. <laughs> Just die, oh moron. <laughs> but you live in L.A., that's what you get, you know. That's what you get out here. People out here, I mean, it's different on the East, I'll admit it, you know. Out here, you cross the street, cars will stop. <laughs> Amazing. You try that in New York, it's like, hey, Joey, he's going to try to make it. <laughs> He ain't even halfway across the street. I want to see this guy legless, you know what I'm saying? Unbelievable. Here, you can't make a buck. You see kids on the street selling maps to the stars' homes. 
What are you going to get, a 30-foot wall with weeds growing on it? I opened my own business, Keys to the Stars Homes. Because I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the truth, back where I come from, it's like you scam everybody, you know? Like I had a friend, this guy Aldo, right? Had one of these restaurants, all you can eat for like five bucks, right? You take two bites, this animal comes over, he goes, that's all you can eat, now get the hell out of here. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Funny? It's funny, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm funny. I'm trying to keep it clean. I'm trying to do what you told it's me. The, you yeah. want to come on over? Yeah, I'll come, come on, on over here. Come on, come on over. Yeah. All right. There's a microphone right there for you. There's a microphone. There you go. Yeah. Can you pin that on that list? Yes. Huh? Yeah, I know what to do with this. All right. There we go. No, I, you are, of course, a little tamer here than you are normally in your act, and uh, yeah, of course. You know what? Uh, you know what? What's this album? This album, like that has the sticker on the on the cover. Is this just a, like a sales type thing? Or a oh promo no, no, or what? no! I mean, the is album it really is really bad. Oh, it's not bad. It depends how old you are. I mean, if you're nine, it might affect you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so I'm, you know, like adults. You know, it's a, it's what I call adult humor. I caught a line off the album. Uh, I think one of them is, what is it? What do you, what do, you do if the chick gets pregnant? Is that one of, oh, the, yeah. one of the cuts on her? Yeah, yeah. What, what are some of the other titles? Maybe we can hear some of the titles uh, on the thing. Masturbation. Okay, that's about, yeah, okay. That's one of those things that sound dirty and is. It actually is. Yeah. No, no, it's, 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 you know, I talk about, you know, relationships a lot. That's what it is. <laughs> and that's a segment what most relationships boil down to, so. Uh, <laughs> Where did the, uh, the Dice nickname come from? Uh, I, I can't talk about that. I okay. Talk about right. that. <laughs> My How mother about? gave birth on a crap table, I mean. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever gotten, you know, I, I know that the, the club thing is, is real aggressive that you do it. Has it mm -hmm. ever gotten you in trouble off stage? Well, not, not, not really, but, uh, I mean, lately I, I've been doing a lot of concerts and I was just, uh, I was banned from a few colleges, a couple Catholic colleges, and, I, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I understood, I didn't even know they were Catholic colleges, but, you know, agents, you know, they go, play there, you know, <laughs> and the kids want you, but, uh, you know, like Seton Hall in New Jersey, I was banned from there, and uh, another place in Boston, but it doesn't bother me, I mean, I understand, you know, but, uh, I mean, one of the things, I, I, I've been getting ripped apart a lot for, um, you know, the language I use, like on the HBO special, they say, this guy rips gays apart, you know, and uh, I'll tell you the truth, I do like three, three minutes on gays, and I do like two hours on women, so, uh, <laughs> you know. But they, they'd they only run that after midnight, wasn't it? But I rip they everybody feel, apart, yeah. that's the whole thing, yeah. and, uh, but they don't bring up the things, I'm against drugs, I'm against drinking, which I mentioned, I do it in a funny way, but, you know, so, you know, I don't get that. I mean, would a kid rather go to school and, and, I mean, would a parent rather a kid go to school and do a little Miss Muffet joke about crack in an alley? I mean, so, you know, <laughs> you know, so that's how I look at it, you know, but they ignore that stuff because I use four letter words. Give me but a, people in this crowd don't know any of them. Give me a couple of those uh, nursery rhymes that I hear you do. But, you know, you, yeah, let's yeah. have... You know what you got to do, you know, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. I got to edit as you I gotta go along. You got to do a little edit as you go along. All right. <laughs> now, that one's no good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, little Boy Blue. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. Jack and Joe went up the hill both with a buck and a quarter. Joe came down with 250. <laughs> I mean, that's business, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Business. Sure. Uh, uh, three blind mice, see how they run. Where are they going? <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, you know what I'm saying? You know, there's a lot of things I talk about, you know, people get aggro. Like, uh, like now I'm doing a, a bit on, like, uh, you know, the handicapped parking in the malls. Every lane's got 30, 40 spots. Are they ever full? <laughs> like every day at 3 o'clock, every handicapped person needs a new pair of Reeboks. I mean, to me, that's funny, you know? But you don't see parking for midgets, you know? Because they don't have a telethon, you know? <laughs> 
you know, so that's the way it goes. What, what about uh, Elvis has played some kind of role with you, right? Well, it, you know, I, I studied his, uh, well, to me, he was funny. You know, his films were hilarious. <laughs> you know, here's my impression of Elvi every Elvis film. What I do, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but, but what I liked about his, uh, his stage presence, it, the, the way he built his character through the years as far as performing, I mean, that, that's what I've gone by. I mean, I never really studied comics or, uh, yeah. you know, I, I never, you know, most comics are very generic to me, and uh, so I, I need to be entertained. So when I'd watch him, I mean, the outfits, the glitter, the whole thing. So uh, yeah. I but, dug that type of thing. And you got a hundred leather jackets, is that right? Hundreds. Hundreds of them? I had a hundred a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I want you to do, if you wouldn't mind? We have the Cup of Fame. We'd love to have a Dice Man cup up there. Would you sign and just put your dental impression on this cup so we can set it up there? Just bite it? Just, just bite it and sign it for us, huh? Yeah. 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 Quickly, when's San Diego coming? You're going to play down San Diego, right? Well, San Diego uh, is uh, April 1st. All right. April 1st, and, um, and Phoenix is March 11th. All next right. Saturday. Andrew All Dice right. Clay. Camp Midnight on the USA Network, and my next guest I'd like to introduce is a true fighter. Her body is totally tattered with the ravages of a rare form of vitamin deficiency. So please embrace with me, if you will, our beauty with the Barlows, our little scrapper with scurvy, Miss Daphne McGuckin. Daphne? Yeah. Ow! Oh, stick my young, sensitive ears, please. May I just... Sorry, Daphne. <laughs> May I just say what a thrill it was to follow the dice man? All right. Well, thank you. Daphne, I'll tell you what. If you would tell, please, our lovely audience tonight a little bit about why you're here to see us, sweetheart. Well, I'm wasting away with scurvy. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. That's not the only reason, because, I mean, it's not like we'd let just any uh, potential ground monkey on the Camp Midnight show. So. <laughs> You have a valid point, Dick. Mm -hmm. Actually, the real reason that I'm here is because I'm your A number one fan. I think you're the funniest guy in the world. And my doctor told me that the power of laughter far surpasses any modern medical treatments they could offer me. So I figured if anyone could save me with a laugh or two, it's you, Dick Wilson. <coughs> <laughs> well, don't worry, hon. Don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. But I'll tell you what, before I deliver another one of those side-splitting Wilson wisecracks, yeah. um, why don't you tell our audience a little bit more about your background and how you became so ill? Well, it all started several years ago when my father became a pirate. Um, he took our life savings and bought a 19th century slaver, and we were off on a life of sea felonies. <laughs> Daphne, you should be ashamed of yourself. I cut me some slack, Dick. I was two years old at the time. <laughs> he was determined to lead a life of evil, but he was not successful in his efforts. And then we also realized that our boat was a little bit slow to catch up with other boats with motors, a modern-day accessory many nowadays boats have. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can see your problem there. Did, did you ever get lucky at all on this thing? Um, yes. Late one night, we ran across a boat in the middle of the Atlantic. Oh, I see. So you used, the, like, the shadow of darkness to, uh, to, you know, cover your attack up. Huh? Well, not exactly. It turned out to be the USS Nimitz. So we figured 8,000 guys with nuclear weapons kind of outweighed a fat guy with a sunburn and a yeah, rusty sword. I'll bet so. <laughs> Mm, good point. How did, your, how did your mom go through all this non-success? Oh, she got a little bored after a few years and walked the plank. <laughs> Dick, could oh, you squeeze my IV? There's a seed stuck in it. Well, oh. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to hear that about your mom. Did you ever, like, find her body? Oh, yes, at Bloomingdale's. What? Well, when the boat docked, we were in New York City at the time, and that's around the time I started wasting away with scurvy. Well, I'll bet so. Living alone on the sea without your mother's guidance? Well, yeah. But I live with my mom now, and my dad comes and visits me about really? six or seven times a year. What and last time he was there, he gave me this. 
What is that? He bought it at a celebrity auction. Don't you recognize it, Dick? No. It's my most valuable Dick Wilson collectible. It's the sweater you were acquitted in. Wait, 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 hold it, hold it, wait, wait, hold it, now, you say most valuable, now, no, do you have some others with you also? Oh, yeah, this is my Dick Wilson lunchbox, I use it to carry my limes while doing the talk show circuit, and I also have this, it's what? your old radio hat! Wait, wait a minute, let me have that, that's great, ah, I'd like to have that, ah. I think the... <laughs> All right, here. <laughs> yeah. It's your yearbook where you were voted most likely to become a communist sympathizer. Well, no, I, let me have it. That was back in the 60s now. Mm, come on now. Come on. Give me a break on that. Anyway, we need to get on with the show, my yeah. darling. So I tell you what, before we do that, why don't I just go ahead and see if I can't rid you of your ailment? Maybe, you know, cure some of this suffering you're having, okay? Do it, my man. This one's for you, Daphne. This joke right here. <clears throat> you see, folks, there was a rabbi and a priest and a minister, and they were all in the same fishing boat together. And the rabbi, he complained that uh, the fish weren't biting. And the minister, he complained that uh, it was starting to rain. Well, I tell you what, the priest looked at both of them in the eye, and he said, why don't we go back to the shore? Why don't we go back to the shore? Go blue! Go blue! Go blue! Go blue! Tim! Tim! Tim, come on! Come on, Tim! Uh, uh, Daphne, I'll try again later, hon. Nice try, Dad. Oh, jeez, all right, all right. Mm. God, yeah, gee. Well, I tell you what, folks, maybe my next guest can help us out here because um, he is a successful comedian and also an actor and probably known best for his portrayal as Biff the Bully in the mega hit Back to the Future. Please say hello to Thomas F. Wilson. <laughs> All right, you are a tall guy. We need you for the Camp Midnight basketball team, huh? I'd be happy what do you to think, be on. Huh? All right, how you, you know, doing? Dick, I'm sitting backstage yeah. and I'm watching the monitor. Yeah. I'm seeing Andrew Dice Clay, very funny guy. Mm -hmm. I get a little nervous, you know, about coming out of here. Why is that? Well, I, I was afraid I couldn't follow him, and then I thought of little Daphne. <laughs> well, yeah. And I thought that if she can put up with scurvy, a disease that hasn't been seen since the 17th century, then I can come out here on campus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You know, and come to think of it, I, I feel the same way. Because you remember, Babe Ruth did the same thing. And he went into the hospital. He said, I'm going to hit a home run for you, little boy, and I'm going to do it today. If Babe Ruth can hit a home run, then I can tell a funny joke later, too. And this is why I love this man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now... You got to tell. Speaking of the Dice Man, wait a minute. You were roommates with the Dice Actually, Man. Yes, uh, v honestly, I lived with the Dice Man for three years in Hollywood. We were roommates. Yes. What is this? Uh, what He's is this? He's a wuss. He's is a real? complete wuss. Is he? Uh, He'd always come into the kitchen. Who stole my candy and crunch? You know. I mean, always. <laughs> Just a minute, Tom. Has he left the studio? Yes, he has. I saw right. him drive he away. He is a wuss. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell you. All right, that's great. Hey, Back to the Future. You're shooting. Two. We're shooting Back to the Future 2 right now, which is why my hair looks like this. Is that uh, it? Yeah. This isn't a voluntary haircut. Uh, and I understand you're shooting three? We are shooting, time? actually, uh, yeah, simultaneously we're shooting Back to the Future's part two and, and three. How in the world do you do that? How do you keep up with what's going on? With here? great difficulty. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> when, when, when's two coming out? Two is uh, scheduled to come out uh, Thanksgiving, this coming Thanksgiving. All right, what's happening in the plot this time? Well, uh, actually, the time machine, well, you remember the time machine at the end of the first one, it goes yeah. into the future. Well, instead of going to the future, it accidentally goes to the 1940s. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're in the middle of World War II, you know? It actually lands in Germany in the middle of World War II. Hitler's bunker is actually a time machine. Whoa. And I think I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, time. okay. <laughs> <laughs> we know he can't tell the real plot. Yeah, he made that one up. Yeah. Hey, do uh, we have a clip? Do we have a clip? Well, that'd be great. Wouldn't we scoop some people? I like there? you know going to that that go to the clip position. You know. Yeah. The, let's do we have that clip. Let's go to the clip. Let's, yeah, let's have it back. <laughs> and then, the, and then the, the the after the clip position with yeah. a serious scene. Here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Here's another one too. Here's another. <laughs> yeah. Here's the other go to the clip. Let's go to the clip. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Where's that clip? Where is that? Where's the clip? Where is that thing? Hey, you uh, you did a, a comedy thing that comes along. You you do a tuba in your comedy act. Yeah, I'm. Uh, why, why do you do that? Well, <laughs> I I actually played the tuba uh, all through since about yeah. the fifth grade. I played the tuba in the marching band. So. What were tuba guys like in the fifth grade? Uh, you can imagine. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was okay. on the debate team and I played the tuba. So okay. you can imagine Ooh. how many noogies yeah. I received. So I anyway, was, you you moved it on into your act. I, I moved it into my act. The tuba's sitting there, you know, in my bedroom <laughs> there, and I said I was doing comedy at the time. Time and I just said, you know, uh, there's a gimmick there somewhere. <laughs> so uh, I began to do it, yeah. Because, I mean, it is, it is funny. I mean, the tuba players are, you know, you see football games. Every other person in the band gets to sit down to the front of the stands and watch the game, talk to their friends, put down the instruments while the tubas are up top, just swinging back and forth the whole time. Like, da, 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 da. They're just swinging back and forth, trying to dodge all the garbage you people are trying to throw into those things. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, I was I was surprised to find out that Biff the bully is quite a family man. You, know, you, you got any kids? I uh, well, Jake, I have a yeah. kid. Do you? Have a uh, yeah, I have a. Do 16 we have a clip? <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go to the clip. We have eight millimeter video. Come on, walk for daddy, honey. We're <laughs> we're teaching her little uh, comedy routines and yeah. uh, how she's, old is she? She's, well, she is. She's gonna. This kid, I swear, all we have is comedians over at the house, you know. So this kid is gonna go to kindergarten and be doing this wild stuff, saying, "Look, my dad and his friends do this in the house every day." Yeah. She'll be the first kindergartner dragging a tuba to kindergarten. Yeah, we have yeah. one. Very small. Come on, swing back and forth, honey, like daddy, you know. So what do you like to do when you're hanging around our house and you're not uh, doing movies and? I uh, well, I I I'm a very boring guy, Dick. I have yeah. no life. I no, actually. <laughs> No, I, but we got well, I just have, yeah. with, a, with a dog and a kid, you know, I'm kept very busy saying, no, put that down, put that down, you know. So, um, but I, I enjoy, uh, I enjoy uh, photography very much and reading and everything. And uh, I mean, I'm a big guy, but I'm not an athlete at all. You've I'm, probably got one of those cameras that have all that stuff that none of us understands on it, don't you? Yeah, I understand most of that stuff, yeah. except you, for, you know, one <laughs> dial that I just do for fun. <laughs> have, you sh have you shown any photography anywhere? Have you had any uh, Actually, showings? actually, um, one of my uh, pictures is in the uh, permanent collection at the uh, Cal California Mu Museum of Photography. Well, so it's been. Uh, that's wonderful. It's been going well. yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Let's get that out of there, okay? All right. Man. <laughs> so well, I'm an artiste. Yeah. Okay? Well, no, I'm, a, I'm a Renaissance man. The best of darn luck to you in the future. Thanks I can't very much. wait till we. Uh, you can come back and actually bring a clip to Back to the Future. I will. I will. I will. Do that. It'll be a lot of fun. It's going to be a great movie. So you say hello to your lovely wife fun. Caroline, who I, I just sure met. Will. But I say that because it makes us sound like we've known each other forever. Well, we're the Wilson boys. The Wilson you know, guys. Dick huh? and Tom. Yeah. And Dick Wilson. See that right oh, back yeah. there? I'm biting a cup. I want you to use them tall teeth okay. there and sign that and bite that for us. There it goes. It's Thomas F. Wilson on Camp Midnight. You saw it right here. Let's go to the clip. Welcome back to Camp Midnight, uh, folks on the USA Network. Uh, Tony Forkish, one of our regulars here. I'm, I'm not sure why. Well, I was uh, in my dressing room, but there's a little sick and dying girl out there who I, I so I can't I can't hang out there right now. Oh, well, so well sure, that's sure. little Daphne McGuffin. Uh, her body's riddled with scurvy, and oh, uh, I'm trying to tell bad. a joke, but I so far all the jokes I've told have oh. turned out to be bombs. Well, why don't you get the big name star somebody to come in here and you know cure her? I met Michael Jackson once. Oh, really? Did I ever show you the picture? No, I've got it here someplace. Just a minute. I always try to keep it close. Yeah, see, here, here, oh, right here. Oh, that's great. Matter of fact, uh, we can get a shot of that. Uh, see, there's me right next to Michael. Pay no attention uh -huh. to those other people. I, you know, well, why don't you me. give him a call and have him come on down here? And well, maybe we can... right after I met him, he uh, ch changed his number and moved. Oh, well, that's too bad, then. Yeah. It doesn't look like we can get anybody to... Well, know, that's kind of what's money. bothering me. I know that we don't have enough money, and it's depressing me. I think I'll take a nap. Sure. Okay. <sighs> Michael Jackson. Yeah, Michael Jackson. Michael, Michael Jackson. Dick? Dick, wake up. Tony? Tony? No, Dick, it's me, Michael Jackson. Oh, it, folks, it's Michael Jackson. Hi. What? Wait a minute. Michael, well, Michael, you look a little pale. Are you feeling okay? No, I feel oh. fine, Dick. How you doing? I want to welcome you to my show, Dick. It's a special show because it's my show. 
<laughs> Wait a minute, this is my show, Camp Midnight. It's mine. No, I'm sorry, Dick. It's not your show, because, like, I won lots of awards and stuff, so it's my show. <laughs> Dick, I'm going to ask you something. Have you ever won any awards? Well, I, I won an attendance award in college. A tennis award? I, I once had an attendance shot, and that was because my monkey bit me at the time. You remember? You remember my monkey bubbles, don't you? <laughs> Ow! Old gray monkey ain't what he used to be, ain't what he used to be, ain't what he used to be. Wait, wait a minute, what the hell is that? Where's the big song? Like Bad and Thriller. I'm sorry, Dick, but the thing is, is that I can only sing public domain songs now because otherwise you'd have to pay me copyright money, so I'm sorry. Well, I don't... I don't pay the bills around here. That's not my responsibility. It's okay, Dick. So, um, I'm gonna ask you something now. Well, um, right. have you... have you... have you... Do, I'm gonna ask you, do you like my nose? Well, I, it's a fine nose, I guess. What do you think about my nose? It's littler I, than your nose, isn't it? What, wait my a minute. Nose. This isn't Jermaine with the uh, discussion. No, here, that's is okay. It? Jermaine, he's my brother. He got his own nose, you know. <laughs> nose, rose, clothes. Nose on top of old smoky. Wait a minute. Oh, well, cover me with snow. <laughs> Just, listen, because you're here. <laughs> you know, Janice, she's got my nose, and that's my nose, too, you know. And Latoya, you know, she's a girl. A lot of people, a lot of people think I look like a girl. You think I look like a girl? Well, I know my. Well, we do have a little girl here that I wish you could help out. You know, little Daphne McGuckin. Da she, Daphne McGuckin. What, well, she's here. She's six. She's outside. She's got her little robe on. Her little slippers on. Slippers. She's, oh, them golden slippers. Oh, them golden slippers. Okay. Oh, Michael, them golden just, slippers. Just, oh, etc. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe you could just. Help her out. Oh, okay, I mean, no, I don't well, know. I'll tell you something, Dick. I'm going to go out here right now, and I'm going to cure her. I love you all. I love everybody. Oh, I'm going to go help little Daphne McGuckin. Michael, it's not going to be that easy. Oh, She's riddled with Daphne. scurvy. Oh, I mean, I've been trying all show. She's a hard cure. Daphne, You'll never wake do up. it. It's me, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? I'm cured. Michael Jackson cured me, and Dick Wilson could. Dick, Dick Wilson could. Dick couldn't cure me. Dick couldn't cure me. Man couldn't cure me. Dick couldn't cure me. Uh, 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 oh, jeez. Oh, what a nightmare. Oh, God, Daphne, Daphne, are you there? Oh, Daphne. Oh, uh, what a horrible dream. Daphne, honey, are you still there? Oh. Hi, Dick. God, good. She's still sick. Oh. What a horrible night. Scooter, I just had a horrible nightmare. What I can't... happened? Well, the segment producers couldn't come up with a way to use Tony as Michael Jackson unless they did it in some kind of dream sequence. And then he came on and he was singing all his public domain song. And, and then he went out and he cured little Daphne McGuckin. And, and, and then he, horrible. Uh, he, he made me look at his nose. And it... Re relax, Dick. Relax. Really, you'll cure Daphne with the funniest joke that ever was. I know well... that. <laughs> Scooter, I don't need to hear it again. I got it. Okay, I, I, okay, the show's going on later. I'll have another chance. I know that. All right, good. Uh, Daphne, hang on there, honey. But, you know, having bad dreams about pop superstars singing old Stephen Foster soons really get me yearning for some yum-yums from Fung Lums. So let's get busy and honker down on some shumai here, huh? Come on over here. Let's take a look. Let's look here. What do we got? Look at this wonderful stuff from Fung Lums over there in Universal City. Let me just hold this up, and if you would hum some nice music while we're doing this. Uh, we've got some delicious things here, we, and, and uh, we're going to enjoy. We have got uh, a variety of things. You know what all this is, uh, because you live out here. I know what it is. Yeah, so we're going to enjoy that from Fung Lums. I've got, do I need to tell what this is over here? I'm, uh, yeah, okay, well, we, we'll, we'll talk about it here in just a minute. Okay, if we've had a good look at it. Come on up, have some eats for us here at Camp Midnight. And while we're doing that, yeah, step right up here. Don't be shy. You're certainly not shy, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Come on up. Yes. No. Uh, men first? Yeah, that's what we do here. That's fine. And while we're doing this, uh, we'd like to play our network stipulation video for you, and it, it is by tonight. It's called Double Old Soul by the Untouchables. And our, vi yeah, our video question Woo! is, watch this closely. Here's the question. Why is Agent Double Old Soul looking for the Tiki Brothers? Let's watch. Agent 004, report to HQ at once. The Kiki Brothers have stolen all the untouchable tickets.
Agent 00 Soul by the Untouchables. Now, in answer to our video question, those who were watching didn't run off to the refrigerator while that was on. Agent 00 Soul was after the Tiki Brothers because they stole all the Untouchable concert tickets, which brings up another question. How in the heck are two claymation figures going to get rid of 15,000 tickets? We'll check on that. What's your name? Nino. And you are? Kim. Well, uh, how's the food? Is it's, right? it's excellent. Is it good? It's really right. good. I noticed that we've got here, and if you just point these out, though, that which you have not eaten already, um, uh, butterfly prawns, beef saute, spring rolls, and steamed shumai for uh, 50, and you ate for, but, what, about 10? About 15. Okay. Well, thanks for being on Camp Midnight. You got the good seats on the front row here, didn't you? Yeah. All right. We'll be back in just a minute with much more on Camp Midnight, so join us. <laughs> Back to Camp Midnight. Uh, my next guest was a regular on Hill Street Blues for 11 years and hasn't stopped working since. Uh, he'll be starring soon in a new daytime series for NBC titled Generations. Please do that crazy audience clap thing for Tarian Black. <laughs> Eleven years. Eleven well, years? No, seven years. Really? Well, all right. Yeah. We'll leave. We'll do this again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> seven years you were seven on Seven years. Yeah. yeah, from the beginning. Ooh. Yeah. And, and your character was again? Uh, uh, Detective Neil Washington. Right. Yeah, the one with the toothpick, flop, flappy hat, and the beard. Should have had some toothpicks for yeah, you. Yeah, right. Fell right at home. <laughs> you know, uh, you're another one of those guys that came from New York. Mm-hmm. Out to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And you, you're another one of these guys who had one of those jobs in New York that was kind of, a, you know, what did you do in New York when you came out of it? Oh, I did a lot of things. Uh, I'll tell you what I can talk about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was a, a post office worker, a truck driver, a mail yeah. carrier. I was a subway conductor. Uh, any, anybody from New York? 
Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. You, you, you remember, uh, uh, the conductor, you know, you have 10 seconds to get in before they close the doors. Well, I'm the one. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> the five count. Yeah, right. So, so many of you guys. You, <laughs> you didn't ever bump into Bruce Willis down the street at a bar. Uh, no. He has the same story. How yeah, I, from I think New he's York. from yeah. Jersey, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm originally, I'm from Jersey, too. Well, you yeah. got out here. You know, another question I have. Now, there's a lot of people out here in Los Angeles, I understand, that retire without ever finding work. Uh -huh. But you came out here, and in a couple of years, you landed Hill Street Blues. What's right. the secret? Well, uh, good training, perseverance, putting your feet in the door, saying, look, I want this job here, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, uh, I guess uh, when I came out, I was kind of threatening. Uh, beards, was, they weren't in at the time. I had a beard, you know, and uh, everybody thought I was really militant. I just got off Broadway <laughs> during the River Niger. If it was the River what? You know, and you come in and they say, hey, look at this brother. He's serious here. You know, let me give him a job. <laughs> you know? Would that work for me? I don't think so. I don't so, think so either. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So Hill Street Blues came and went, won a lot yeah. of awards, and we're finally yes, gone. So but did. now you got something that's starting on Monday. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trading in, uh, like I said, the toothpick, the beard, and uh, floppy hats for a suit, yeah. a family, and lots of ice cream. So what's the story? <laughs> what is this? The generations. Generations. Yeah, you might have heard the ads. You know, yeah. uh, black. White in color, generation. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a story about t uh, two families, one black, one white, of course. I'm the head of the black family, and how their li lives intertwine with one another. Yeah. Uh, we're both very successful. I happen to own five, five ice cream parlors. That's where Count the ice em. cream comes in. Five. five. Very successful. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of money. We're talking about old money and new money. <laughs> and uh, good, good characters, the, the cast. Can I name some of them? Let's do that. Okay, well, we have um, Pat... Ram, uh, no, Pat Crawley from Dynasty, mm -hmm. Gail Ramsey from uh, uh, General Hospital, uh, we have uh, Joan Pringle from White Shadow, uh, Lynn Hamilton from The Roots Next Generation, uh, Peter Massey from Days of Our Lives, Janelle Allen from Palmer's Town, Chris, Christoph St. John, who plays my son, from Charles and Company. Oh, wow. Yeah, and yeah. Sharon Brown from the hit uh, Dreamgirls. Well, Torian, let's yeah. bring them on out. Here they all here are tonight. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not out here. Great hey, that's good to meet. We'll yeah, look forward to seeing guess. that. What else are you doing? What, what else do you like to do? Oh, uh, well, I'm raising my children. I'm spending quality time How with them. How many do you have? I have eight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. I have, I have two, two sons who are grown, and then I have yeah. six adopted children. Who I'm raising? Oh, the kids. Right. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And I'm a single parent. Oh, are you? Yeah. So, yeah. Is it? Is it's tough for single parents to adopt, isn't it? Not anymore. It's wonderful. I mean, you know, some of the guidelines have been the red tape is cut through. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people they have this misconception that's really, really hard and they get turned around, but I'm here to tell you, I'm an example that it can be done. If I can adopt six of them, at least you can adopt one. All right, right. what's the youngest? Uh, he's uh, two months old now. As a matter of fact, he was, he was born on the day that I screen tested, and uh, my name in the series is Henry Marshall, so naturally I named him Marshall. Yeah. All right. He's well, going January 10th. That's good. Yes. Well, congratulations. Well, so you've got you. a great thing coming thank up. You. Yeah. And I'd like for you, but yes. before I have you sign a cup and, uh -huh. and uh, and bite it. <clears throat> See, <laughs> just lean over here. Just okay. Again. See, I've been trying to tell these jokes on the show to uh -huh. save little Daphne McGuckin, who's riddled with scurvy on our mm. show. Um, would you play along? Would you just laugh real loud at whatever I do? I think you could really help out. I'll try. Okay, thanks. <laughs> little Daphne, I know you're listening, hon. This is the one that's going to cure you. All right, All right. listen closely. What is the difference in Dan Quayle and an elephant? What is the difference? Well, Dan Quayle is the vice president of the United States of America, mm -hmm. and an elephant is the largest living land mammal. <laughs> Dick, give me my cup. Let me sign the cup. Okay, you ought to right. be ashamed of yourself, right, man. Right. You well, ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hang in there. Daphne, Daphne. <laughs> Torian Black, thank I'll you. I'll pray for you, Daphne. <laughs> All right, sign thank that you. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha Bory coming up from the Hollywood Reporter. Dick Wilson killed me.
Welcome back to Camp Midnight. My next guest is a former editor of the Tinseltown trade paper, The Hollywood Reporter. And uh, now she has a book of her own called Hollywood Legends, and she's uncovering the lore behind the lights and the camera and the action of the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Please welcome Marsha Bory. How are you? Good to see you. Is all right there? All right, let's just, uh, yeah, let me just do that. I, I'd like to do this for you it, here. Or I'll cure Daphne. In yeah, the okay. I, I really want to do that myself, so I'd oh, rather okay. not. Hey, thanks Seriously. for coming on. How are you? Terrific. Well, good. You know, the, tell, the, for those of people who have never been to Los Angeles, never owned a movie theater, uh, never been involved in the industry, what is The Hollywood Reporter? The Hollywood Reporter is a daily entertainment trade paper. For the, I'm sure a lot of you may or may not read the Wall Street Journal, but... The Hollywood Reporter is to the show business what the Wall Street Journal is to the financial community. And it's read every day by every studio head, every producer, writer, director, star, down to the cop at the gate. And we've been a paper for 59 years. Yeah. And as you said, I was the editor. I'm now the director of communications. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been with the paper? Off and on, 15 years. Yeah. A lot of reporting and stories and things like that. A lot of done. reporting and stories, yes. Let's, let's show the book here. You put out a new book now. And uh, can we get a, where you want to have a picture of this book? Right here, is that okay? Hollywood Legends, The Golden Years of the Hollywood Reporter. Which What's I, in this book? Well, first of all, I must say I co-authored it with Teachy Wilkerson, who is the publisher mm -hmm. and editor-in-chief of The Hollywood Reporter. All right. And uh, we call it the golden era. It's the 30s, 40s, 50s of Hollywood. Now, is Camp when, Midnight in this at all? Um, uh, Camp Midnight just missed. Just missed it, yeah. You'll, I, be, you'll be in the sequel. Okay, good. Okay? But uh, we start in the 30s, and it's about the great stars, Clark Gable, Gene Harlow, Carol well, Lombard. Let me throw some names out, and you tell throw. a few stories. Of okay. course. Let's okay. talk about Clark Gable, Carol Lombard. Just yes. a few seconds on that. Well, uh, Clark Gable, as you know, was the king, uh, the greatest leading man in a way that Hollywood has ever had. He was married to Carol Lombard, who was a zany comedian. I'm sure, since this looks like a very young audience, that perhaps many of you do not know her, but Carol Lombard was a gorgeous Bette Midler. She had um, the kookiness of Bette and the, the beauty of, well, the beauty of Carol Lombard. She was what we consider the first celebrity victim of World War II. When Pearl Harbor happened in 1941, Carol Lombard was the first one to organize war bond drives. In other words, getting stars together to go across the country to sell war bonds. What most people don't know until they read this book is that she and Gable had been married about a year and a half. And this was around Christmas time, and they had the very first serious quarrel of their marriage. But she had committed to go off on this war bond tour. And so she and her mother and her press agent flew to her home state of Indiana. She sold hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of war bonds. By that time, the government had commandeered all of the airplanes. She was asked to come back by train, and she was so anxious to get back to Gable because just before she'd left, he'd sent her off with the gift of a pair of diamond earrings, which she told him that she would never take off. At any rate, when she found out that she couldn't come by plane, she called Washington. She got them to give her three seats on a plane. She and her mother and her press agent took the plane, together with a lot of servicemen. On the way back, the plane uh, hit a peak called Double Up Peak in Las Vegas, Nevada. It was total devastation. Of course, they didn't know at the time. They just knew that there was a crash. Clark Gable rushed to Las Vegas, Nevada. He wanted to climb up that 12,000 feet peak, foot peak and search for her, but they pleaded with him to stay below. When the rescuers got to the top of the mountain in the snow, all they found, one tangible piece of something that was left, was one diamond earring in the snow, which they brought back to Gable. Why this was interesting, in addition to, of course, being very tragic, was that then Clark Gable, who was 41 years old, too old to be drafted, did not have to go into the service decided he couldn't live at home, he couldn't stay in the house that he'd shared with Lombard. So he told his studio that he had to enlist, he had to go off to the war. They immediately called Washington, tried to get him a commission, and could have gotten him a commission. He said, no, I'm going to go in as a private. And he went in as a private. 
as Gable went, so went almost half of Hollywood's leading men, Tyrone Power, Jimmy Stewart, yeah. the whole group. Yeah, and, and it all happened as a result of Carol Lombard's tragic death. Well, those are great. And there are stories like this all through this book, right? Oh, all, all right. Them. Well, that's it. Well, Marsha, I want to thank you. We've run out of time. I know you've got stories and stories we could spend 90 minutes on if we could. Right. But uh, good luck to you in the future. Good luck on the book. And thanks for coming on camp. Thank you night. so much, Dave. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Night. On the USA Network, my next guest was a founding member of the group X, and was one of, the most, one of the most influential and critically acclaimed rock bands of the 80s, and he's currently recording his first solo album. That's going to be out uh, later this year on the Geffen level, uh, label, Geffen label, okay. So tonight, singing By the Light, let's meet John Doe. Yeah. All right, John. Hey. There you go. There's that microphone there. Microphone there you go. Put that little thing on there. Yeah, a little thing, isn't it? How much time have I got with John? Somebody show me. Somebody hold me a, a, a little thing up here, because there's so much to talk about. We've got three minutes, John. Wow. So let's see what we can squeeze into there. All okay. Right, you start. What have you been doing? There's so many different things. Well, I got lucky enough to get a couple of movie parts. Yeah. And what? Which and, ones uh, are those? Well, one is called Roadhouse, and another one's called Great Balls of Fire. The Roadhouse is a uh, killer. Uh, men fighting is mm -hmm. what Roadhouse is about. It's like bigger cars, bigger wrecks, bigger guns, uh, uh, bigger women. Uh, it's, uh, you know. And then that other one is what, the Jerry Lee Lewis story? It's about Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. yeah. It's not his full life, but it's... What do you play in that uh, part? I play uh, his bass player and also um, his cousin father-in-law and uh, manager. Ooh, a lot of yeah. roles in there, huh? Well, it's all the same guy. <laughs> Believe it or oh, not. Was it really? Yeah, yeah. A guy named J.W. Brown, and he's uh, Jerry Lewis's third wife's father, Myra. You Myra get that Brown. Jerry Lewis family tree, and you just keep running into yourself, don't you? <clears throat> yeah, you can, end yeah. Up being, you can end up being your own uncle. <laughs> Real easy. <laughs> What's happening with X? Is X still around? Where are they? What yeah, we're just uh, taking some time off. We had uh, Xene and, and I had children uh, by different wives and husbands. Yeah. And uh, on the same day, too. Did you really? Yeah, yeah same day, same hospital. <laughs> it was a trip. How old are the kids now? Uh, 13 months. Yeah. And... Um, we're just taking some time off. I can't feature, uh, you know, a one-year-old on tour yeah. for, you know, four months doing one-nighters. It'd kill him. So what else have you been doing? You've been doing some producing, I guess, huh? Oh, just, uh, you know, friends. Yeah. Not, not, not really, you know, a couple records here and there. But. Well, now, the solo album, <laughs> it's going to be out when, do you think? When do you expect Well, I don't know, Dick. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, as soon as I can get it done. What, I, do you, I, what point are we on now? I mean, we're on March, about... Or... Uh, uh, one out of ten. Have you? <laughs> no, I got I, I got a bunch of songs and and I'm working with uh, with different musicians and just taking a step at a at a time, you know. What kind of stuff? Of course, like we heard like here. Like this, but with a band. You yeah. know, it's it's uh, it's kind of like John Doe music. You know, mm -hmm. it's very similar to that. So, what do you want to do? Are you doing everything you want to do at the moment, or is there something you'd like to tackle uh, in the future? Oh, I'd like to uh, to spend more time with with my horse. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm doing I'm doing a whole lot of I got too much You're stuff to do. Yeah, You're comfortable, aren't you? no, I'm not comfortable at all. <laughs> well, teach me how to ride a horse sometimes. I don't know how to do that. So. Oh, it's very easy. You just got to spend the time. Okay. Fall off a few times, and you're in business. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I want to thank you for coming on, and if you wouldn't mind, bite and signing a cup for our cup wall. Just put your dental impression on there, if yeah. you would. There it is yeah. right there, yeah. and yeah. sign it. And folks, it's John Doe. Yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, welcome back to Camp Midnight. I'm a little concerned now because, as you know, I did promise that I would tell the funniest joke that ever was for little Daphne McGuckin, our, our guest who is riddled with scurvy tonight. So far, it hasn't happened, but I feel like this final joke is going to be the one that heals this lady right here. 
Matter of fact, I feel so good about it that I, I've had sent out for a cake so we can celebrate when we get all done, when you're on your feet and you're a, a loving little child once again like I know you are. So I'm ready to go. All right, babe? Go for it, Dickmeister. <clears throat> Take it home. All right. This one's for you, Daphne. All right. Well, you see, this ape escaped from the zoo. And uh, so the zoo hired these guys to go out and, and, and get him again. You know, they hired somebody, and this guy who showed up, he applied for the job. He said, okay, I'll go out and get your aid for you. And it, <clears throat> did I tell you the guy was Irish? Okay, he's Irish because he, then he drinks a lot. And he said to the first guy, that's the first guy that was at the zoo, the one who hired him in the, in the first place, he said, I've got to take my dog along with me, the Irish guy's dog. And so what he did is this Irish guy and the dog, they go out and they try to find this ape. Now, the, uh, did I, the ape escaped. Did I tell you how that was? The, the, the guy that ran the zoo, uh, his wife uh, was, left the cage door open. That's how the ape got out. So they've ended up finding this ape up in a pine tree. And the, uh, the Irish guy's allergic to pine. And so the Irish guy, he turns to the girl and he says, I'm not going up a tree. I'm allergic to pine. And the girl turns to the guy and she says, I'm not either. I'm allergic to the dog. Can't we just spend the $10,000 anyway? Huh? Huh? We're losing her. Can't losing. we just spend the $10,000 anyway? Wait. She's I gone. thought. Wait, 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 no, She's gone. Gone. I, I know I've got some other jokes around here. But wait a minute. Sticky fly paper. What's this doing? <laughs> ah, oh, oh, oh. A rat trap. What's that? Oh, oh. oh. Dick performed his sight-splitting series of pratfalls, the audience laughed and laughed, and everyone agreed that there never was such a gag in all the world, and that Dick had made the funniest joke that ever was. And Daphne did get better, and she did teach sign language to rhesus monkeys. And as long as she lived, she never, ever sold the sweater that Dick was acquitted in. And that, Caroline, is the story of the little girl who was riddled with scurvy and the talk show host who cured her. Yeah. Scooter, tell me another one. I have another one right here. Go. Once upon a time, late night laugh fest host Dick Wilson was thanking tonight's guests. Maureen McCormick, Yay. Thomas Wilson, Torian Black, Marsha Bory, Andrew Dice Clay, He's good. and John Doe. And of course our regulars, Caroline Schlitt and Tony Forkish. Then when he was done, he started teasing next week's guests. The lovely Catherine Mary Stewart and Darren from Bewitched. Which one, the first or the second one? The second one, Caroline. Dick Sargent. He's lovely. The next thing he knew, his wicked stepmother turned him into a major indoor soccer ball. And while the LA Aztecs booted him around the fabulous forum, Alan Thicke arrived to host the show. But Scooter, Dick's brave and handsome...